What's up, everybody? My name is Simon Hill. Hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment, share this video, and let's get to it. I'm not going to waste your time. If you're not going to watch this video in its entirety and you're only going to watch one or two minutes, leave a racist or hateful and nasty comment. Fuck you, fuck your mama, and you obviously do not have the brain capacity to pay attention to anything longer than five seconds, which is probably why you're a conservative, reactionary asshole who gets all of their information from 4chan poll infographics. Now, I'm going to talk finally and definitively about Chicago, black on black violence, all of that. This video is actually primarily for black people, right? And if you are a white person watching this, you know, uh, you're welcome to listen. You're welcome to leave a comment if it's, as long as it's respectful and understanding. But this message is for black people in relation to the Second Amendment. If you have not seen any of my other videos and you do not understand my views about the Second Amendment, please, please, I implore you to watch those other videos, come into them with an open mind and an open heart, and let's have an honest discussion. And I hope, hopefully, I'm able to convince you from this evil ideology that has infected the American mind, that Americanness is tied to the phallus that shoots weapons of war, that shoots bullets that take lives. So I want to first start with this comment that I got from Anthony Magruder, who replied to the video I made replying to him after he replied <laughs> in the video I made about Leona Hale, who was shot. Anthony Magruder replied to the video where I was breaking apart his argument about why the abolishing the Second Amendment makes no sense. This man obviously has some nuts and some testicles. He actually has some fortitude and he's actually a man. He's not one of these right wing cowards who leaves hateful comments and disappears and is a faceless Anon. He's actually a person with uh, some testosterone. So I respect him. I'm going to read his comment. He said, trust me, I get your point in, re in regards to abolishing the Second Amendment. In a better America, no one will have guns and there will be no racism. Yes, that is an ideal world. Getting rid of the guns is possible. Getting rid of racism is not. I repeat, it is impossible to get rid of racism, white supremacy. We can mitigate it. We can try to change the ideology and the world around us, but we will never be able to eradicate certain parts of human nature. Seeing as everyone has guns, especially the races, I have one and not need it than not have one and need it. Okay, oddly written sentence, but I get his point. So yes, the white supremacists have guns and also other civilians have guns. The point I'm trying to make though is that does not have to be the case. And Anthony, I told you in my previous video and I'll tell everybody again, I used to be like you. I used to love guns. I had an AK-47, a 38 revolver, used to go to the shooting range all the time outside in Miami, drove around with the straps in my car, had a concealed uh, carry permit, all that sort of stuff. And when I saw the mass shooting that happened in Washington or Oregon or something like that, because there's been so many over the years, I said enough is enough and I'm a part of the problem because I got sick and tired of turning on the news and seeing people die. And me owning a gun is part of the problem. The same way a vegan says me eating meat is a part of destroying the environment, torturing animals, that sort of thing. That's the way I see gun ownership. If you are owning guns, you are a part of the problem. We need to make gun ownership like a stigma, a taboo, because there's no need for it. We live in a society, guys. We live in a society, and walking around with nine millimeters doesn't make sense. Anyway, I'm from Chicago, so to be honest, it's not the racist I worry about. Now, this is code, and he is presumably a black man. Presumably. Who knows who these people are? Once again, Anthony doesn't have any content on his channel, so I don't know if he's black or if he's one of these white supremacists who pretend to be black and instigate in the comments. Whatever. He is using coded language to say that he's worried more about black people in his city or other minorities or just people in general in Chicago with guns, right? Okay. Congrats on your marriage. Shokran Jazeelan. That's thank you in Arabic. Thanks for the shout out. You're welcome, boss. No worries. So let's finally talk about Chicago because the right wing people love to bring this up. And some people even... Black people like to bring this up. Why do we talk about Black Lives Matter when we don't care about uh, the, the killings in Chicago? First and foremost, first and foremost, the movement, not the organization, Black Lives Matter, is about holding police accountable for when they do wrong and when they kill civilians, whether they be black or white, period. How can you not get on board with this? The organization, the one y'all like to pull up with Patrice Colors and her spending billions on a mansion, whatever, that's a different organization. 
the movement, the ideology, the, the sentiment of Black Lives Matter is about making America finally acknowledge black people in a way, in a respectful way, treating us with humanity and dignity and making sure that if a police kill somebody who is unarmed or they kill them unjustly, that they are held to the same accountability standards as a civilian. If I murdered a civilian with a body camera on, like uh, the like the police did with Quadri Sanders or like the police did with the countless other black men throughout history uh, and they got away with it, right? Like Rodney King, for example, right? They didn't murder him, but they beat him to a pulp. These guys were not held to the same standards as if I and me and my homies beat up Rodney King or we shot Quadri Sanders or we ran up on Tamir Rice or we uh, shot Sean Bell or, 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 you know, or Oscar Grant. That's the that's the thing. That's the thing. That's the basis of Black Lives Matter. OK, so first and foremost, that's why Chicago is a non issue in this discussion about holding police accountable and also changing the society that doesn't criminalize black uh, people that doesn't view us as threats. You know, I spoke about in my sagging video. Please go watch my previous content about how even how we wear our clothes and how we behave and and what we do when we're not harming anybody is criminalized and 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 demonized in America. That needs to stop. And that's the part of Black Lives Matter. Now, yes, Black Lives Matter as a movement and a sentiment should also be about stopping the violence in the black community, period. People throw out Chicago and act like, huh, I said Chicago, so now whatever he said doesn't matter. You fucking stupid idiot. Anyway, I'm not going to rant because there's a lot I want to get into, but I'm going to try to keep this video as short as possible. So first and foremost, this is Chicago. Chicago has a population of 2.699 million in uh, 2020, right? I am currently filming this video in Istanbul, Turkey. Istanbul, Turkey has a population size almost seven times larger, 15.46 million people as of 2020. Chicago in 20. Oh, God. Oh, come on. No, 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 no. I wanted to show this. OK, let's go back. Let's go back. All right. I'm not interested. Hold on. <laughs> All right. No. Can I go back? Look, Chicago <laughs> had around 800 homicides. OK, spamming newspapers. I'm not signing up for a subscription. You know what they should do? They should create like a Netflix for news, you know, where you can just sign up for one service and get all the news you want, you know, because I already have a New York Times subscription. Hold on. Let's scroll this over to the side here. All right. Let me scroll down. So Chicago reached at least 800 homicides in 2021, a level not seen in 25 years, 800 homicides in a city of 2.6 million. Istanbul was able to solve all the murders they had. <laughs> was able to solve all the murder cases of 2021. They only had 294 murders. In Istanbul, Turkey, a city of 15 million people. But Chicago, with close to 3 million, had 800 murders. And if that doesn't make you embarrassed, you should be embarrassed as an American that that can happen in our country. If you're not embarrassed, when you compare the crime statistics of Istanbul, of, of Turkey in the US, I mean, the murder rate is not even close. 3.8 murder rate to five. And yes, the US has a much larger population. But when we just look at Chicago as one example, that should be embarrassing. And it's sad that so many Americans die every year to gun violence. And it's so preventable. It's absolutely preventable. And if you are a gun owner, if you are a gun advocate, if you are a proponent of the Second Amendment, you are a sick person that you can't see that this thing does not help anybody, period. I am sick and tired of this Second Amendment bullshit. I'm sick and tired of people coming in my comments saying we need the gun. Having a gun doesn't make you more American. Caring about other Americans makes you more American. Our ideals to get better as a country make us American. And yes, people like... Uh, People like Anthony want to be safe, better have it than not need it, than need it than not have it. But God damn it, when does it become enough, man? Anthony, 
like many Americans, I will presume, I'm not trying to, you know, judge you, whoever you are, that you are a Christian. Would Jesus walk around with an AR-15 or a 9mm or a 38 revolver or a shotgun? You guys have to start living your creed. I'm a Muslim, right? And in Islam, they tell us to defend ourselves. But it's better when somebody sues for peace to put the weapons down. This has to stop. It has to stop. We can't keep on being the embarrassment of the world. Chicago with 3 million people, 800 homicides. And Istanbul with 15.46 million people was able to solve all their murders. That's sad. That's very sad. So let's go to the Brookings Institute. I'm going to quickly read this uh, article from Brookings about the gun violence in Chicago. I'll read it, give more commentary. But once again, my stance will never will probably never change somebody please show me another country in the world that has as many guns as america and as much violence and death some people's going somebody is going to say switzerland all the men in switzerland are required to have guns because they go into military service and they keep them locked up in their house just in case the french or germans invade somebody's going to say some other weird country somebody's going to bring up the violence in central america or some you know butt fuck african country but that should not be comparable at all to the united states of america come on guys come on have some common sense all right anyway let's read this so mapping gun violence a closer look at the intersection between place and gun homicides in four cities this was published on thursday april 21st 2022 dw rollins and hannah love wrote this so the rise in gun homicides in the united states is having reverberating political ramifications at the federal state and local levels with many elected officials falling back into tough on crime policies to curb the violence this punitive turn can be seen in president joe biden's proposed federal budget in which he calls for more police officers on the beat and allocates an additional $30 billion for state and local governments to support law enforcement. Many local leaders are mirroring the, this approach, centering uh, their gun violence prevention strategies on increasing funding for police and rolling back criminal justice reforms. What these enforcement-based approaches fail to recognize is that the recent rise in homicides is more nuanced than it appears. Rather than a widespread dispersal of gun violence within cities, the increases in gun homicides are largely concentrated in disinvested and structurally disadvantaged neighborhoods that had high rates of gun violence to begin with. This geographic concentration is a persistent challenge, not a new one, and it requires targeted solutions to improve outcomes in disinvested places rather than reverting to the old tough on crime playbook now some people who are listening this far might say this might read this and say guns violence is happening in places that are disadvantaged poor etc right and statistically often these places are filled with people of color i hate that phrase black people etc right they will say simon if your ideal world happened where america abolished the guns they're going to criminalize people who have them, right? Of course, because the guns would be illegal. And the first people that they usually target whenever a law is made to make criminality in action would be to target black people. Of course, we saw that with crack and cocaine and the disparities there and many, many other things, right? The, the black codes all through the Jim Crow era, black men continue to be uh, disproportionately sentenced than white men for the same crime, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? I would argue that I would hope that if we do muster the strength and courage to abolish the Second Amendment, that this would happen. Anybody who has a legally purchased gun can get full price back for the gun or maybe even more, maybe at a premium. You bought your, you know, your shotgun for seven hundred dollars. You're going to get it back. You're, the government will buy it from you for nine hundred. Right. And anybody who has an illegal gun can safely return their guns to a police station to somewhere else no charges no arrest nothing like that right and i would hope also that the legislation that would that would get rid of the guns hopefully would also have some sort of like amnesty program for the people who turn in their guns for like a certain number of years because i don't expect that we could just get rid of the guns overnight in one night i would hope that this will be a steady slow uh like denazification like uh de de-rifleication of america and it would happen maybe over five or ten years maybe over a generation it would happen but we would slowly slowly phase them out right that would be the ideal 
not for the government to say it's illegal. And then they start terrorizing the hood like they did in the 80s and 90s, locking up black men for all sorts of stuff. I would hope that we could do this in a way that is fair and equitable and has restorative justice. OK, the violence must stop. All right. Uh, this piece takes a deeper look at patterns of gun violence in four cities, Chicago, Nashville, Tennessee, Kansas City, Missouri, and Baltimore, and finds that each city's gun homicide increases were driven predominantly by increases in neighborhoods where gun violence has long been a persistent fixture of daily life alongside systemic dis disinvestment, segregation, and economic inequality. These patterns point to the longer term needs to address the place based factors that influence violence and invest in the critical community infrastructure that has not only been proven to make communities safer, but can also help them thrive. Right. Also, by the way, by the end of this video, I'm pretty sure some right wing nut will still say something like uh, the gun violence in Chicago is a problem. I will probably continue, no matter what I say about gun violence or the Second Amendment, get right wing conservative reactionary nuts on my channel saying Chicago, Chicago, black on black violence. Uh, 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 these rednecks, they don't listen. They don't read. They just listen to Fox News and just take whatever comes in. Right. The only argument they really have. And by the way, when they really say Chicago, all they're really saying is black people are pathologically criminal. That's what they really want to say. But they don't say it because they are pussy. The white supremacists are pussy. They are they are not men. They are actual not men. They are scared to say what they say in public. They say it behind closed doors with their family and turn their kids into little David Dukes and stuff like that because their society, their mind, their worldview is twisted and is full of hate. And these people are, are, are actually just trying to divert from the fact that America has done historical wrongs to many different groups of people, specifically black people and many other groups as well. They don't want to acknowledge that. So instead, they turn to race science and race realism and all these other things to say, really, we don't have a gun problem in America. We have a black problem in America. And they distort th statistics to say that black people are the ones committing the most violent crimes. It's absolutely not true. I should do a deep dive video into that. But these people, right, they are so scared to just say what they really think and what they really think is they don't really care about the kids in Chicago. They're actually kind of glad that the kid, the black kids in Chicago are murdering each other, but they don't want us to care about that. They just want to use that point to throw in our face that uh, the, the, the movement to end the violence, the movement to have Black Lives Matter, all of this stuff uh, is really uh, a distraction from their end goal of a white supremacist death cult. Because once again, I've said in my previous videos, the white supremacists do not have a vision for a society. They only have a vision of a death cult. They only want the world to burn, right? And yes, I've left America completely. I will never return, never return. So don't worry about me, guys. I'm just one man on the internet talking my opinion. Anyway, national data doesn't tell the full story about the increase in gun homicides. Between 2019 and 2020, a very specific phenomenon occurred. While homicides rose nearly 30% driven by gun homicides, overall crime rates declined by 5%. This divergence matters, as experts contend, because homicides and crime usually rise or decline together. And importantly, homicides require different kinds of interventions than other crimes. It is therefore not only incorrect to say we're in a crime wave, but it also obscures the specific challenge at hand, gun homicides. Interesting. Homicides and crime usually rise or decline together. Interesting. Interesting. I did not know that. Moreover, unlike the last major uptick of homicides in 2015, which was heavily concentrated in small sets of big cities, including Baltimore, Chicago, and Washington, D.C., this rise is more widespread, affecting small and large cities and blue and red cities and states alike. The seemingly dispersed nature of this rise is fueling fear nationwide, with as many as 8 in 10 Americans saying crime is a major problem, ranking it ahead of health care and poverty. To better understand patterns of rising gun homicides and who this rise primarily affects, impacts, as well as to suggest potential solutions, we selected four cities with varying population sizes, demographics, and murder rates. We then plotted the location of all gun homicides on a map showing the percentage of households in poverty at the block group level using data from the 2019 American Community Survey five-year estimates. Recent increases in gun homicides are highly localized in disinvested areas, as are their cumulative impacts. 
When we looked more gra granularly at gun homicides within these cities, we found that the burden of gun violence is unequally shared. Some communities are relatively untouched, while others live under the threat of gun violence on a regular basis, alongside systemic disinvestment, segregation, and economic inequity. Notably, poverty alone was not a predictable factor for high rates of gun homicides, but rather the intersection between poverty, racial segrega segregation, and systemic disinvestment. In Chicago, for instance, gun homicides in 2019 and 2020 were concentrated in neighborhoods far from the city center that have long suffered from severe disinvestment as a result of white flight and are now centers of concentrated poverty with predominantly black residents. As figure one shows, these include neighborhoods in the west side, including Humboldt Park, Austin, West and East Garfield Park, and North Lawndale areas, along with the south and southwest sides. So as Chicago's murder rate increased by 53% from 2019 to 2020, 20, from 18.9 homicides per 100,000 residents to 28.9, residents in disinvested areas bore the brunt of this burden, while more affluent areas had near record low levels of murder. Here is a chart here. You can pause the video, scan it, look at it more. Okay. Similar trends emerged in Kansas City, which saw its murder rate increase 16% from 2019 to 2020. Our analysis, figure two, found that in both years, gun homicides were concentrated in neighborhoods with high levels of concentrated poverty and a history of racist housing policies just east of downtown, Parkview and Lincolns, along with a strip of relatively high poverty neighborhoods, particularly Oak Park and Swope Park, along the US 71 freeway south of downtown. A local analysis of the Missouri Independent found a correlation between high rates of gun violence in these neighborhoods and higher than average eviction rates, which they contend contributed to the increase in murder rates alongside economic injustice and lack of access to critical community amenities such as food and quality education. As in Chicago, Kansas City had a high murder rate in 2020. 30.9 homicides per 100,000 residents, but more affluent areas within the city were largely untouched by gun homicides. Uh, yeah, by the way, what, speaking about the, uh, the, the racists and the conservatives who believe we don't have a gun problem, we have a black problem, these people don't care about systemic issues, right? These people think that, uh, you know, black people are naturally violent and that, you know, things like poverty, uh, gentrification, uh, different societal factors can influence people to do crime. It's almost understood because most of the people who are conservatives and reactionaries never went to college, right? They just get all of their information from the chans and whatever they hear on the internet, whatever right wing nut tells them on Fox News. They never went to college. It's it's a known fact. It's a statistical fact that most conservatives in America uh, are small business owners, uh, have high school uh, graduation, and uh, that's it, right? So they're not critical thinkers in that sense, right? And by the way, I graduated from Loyola University in New Orleans. Uh, I'm not trying to laud my education. I'm not trying to say having a higher degree puts you at a, a higher intellectual level, but there are some things that you do learn in college, right? Such as being open-minded, getting exposed to new ideas, learning how to read charts and statistics, that sort of thing that a small business owner, a truck driver who listens to Rush Limbaugh all day on repeat on AM radio, it has a different worldview. Anyway, uh, yeah, the reason why the murder rates are so high is because of all of these systemic problems. And, um, you know, to, to black people who are watching this, you know, I know it, it's dangerous out there, man. I used, like I said, I used to carry straps with me in the car, all that sort of stuff. But when I had my straps, I was always thinking, when am I going to use it? Right. It's sort of like when you have the gun around you, you're always thinking about when are you when can I actually put in some work? When can I put my tool to use? And when you have that in mind, you sort of create the situation that it will happen. You know, in one of my rap battles I posted, I literally had the gun on me while I was rapping with the latest one. I post me against uh, not Mike Spliff. I forgot the name. I forgot the name of the other guy. One of the black guy I battled in Florida, right? I literally had the gun on me and there was a shootout right after that battle. And I didn't bust my tool, but I was like, look at that. All of those thoughts I was thinking about, you know, uh, there's, um, there's one day going to be a time I have to put in some work. It happened. You know what I mean? And luckily I didn't put in work. And also, by the way, a lot of you guys are carrying guns and carrying them in the wrong way. Uh, you'll probably use them in a situation that could get you even into more trouble. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, I know there's the idea of self-defense, better have it than not need it than need it and not have it. But we all have to just say it's it's got to end. It's getting too ridiculous because, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time, the things you worry about happening don't happen, right? You're not going to get carjacked. No one's going to bust into your house. No one's going to come and rape your wife. And if those things do happen, you know, I'm sorry. And there's a way to defend yourself and fight against that. You know what I mean? But uh, by and large, those things don't happen, you know? And if they do, they're really, really bad things. And I don't, you know, I don't really have the exact answer. I don't really have the exact answer for that. But I know for a fact in Turkey, right, if somebody bursts into your house, you have the right to fight them, but you can't kill them if they come into your house, right? Uh, and try to rob you, rape you, whatever. Anyway, let's continue. Uh, Baltimore, a city with historically high rates of gun violence, saw its murder rate decline by 3% between 2019 and 2020, with 58.8% uh, homicides per 100,000 residents to 57.3. It was one of 10 majority black cities that saw violent crime decline during that period. Even with this decline, however, the pattern of gun violence concentrating in historically disinvented disinvested communities holds as figure three reveals homicides in both years were most concentrated on the city's west side along the fulton avenue corridor one of the city's poorest areas which has been impacted by segregation and systemic disinvestment rates were also generally high in other pockets of poverty such as north of patterson park on east side central park heights on the west side and the winston govans neighborhood on the city's northern edge these areas map these areas map onto the city's well-known black butterfly butterfly or low-income highly segregated majority black neighborhoods on the east and west sides nashville saw a 36 percent increase in its murder rate from 20 from 12.5 homicides per 100,000 residents in 2019 to 16.5 in 2020. Our analysis figure four found that the highest concentrations of gun violence in both years were in high poverty areas just outside the city's downtown core, North Nashville and the East Bank, which was the heart of the black Nashville before urban renewal and freeway construction destroyed it. In contrast to these highly segregated neighborhoods with generational poverty, gun homicides are not elevated in the Nolensville Pike neighborhood, which has a high poverty rate, but much more economic and racial diversity with a larger population of middle class immigrants. These trends reflect the enduring relationship between racial segregation and higher rates of violence. Right. So to combat gun violence, invest in the community infrastructure that keeps neighborhoods safe. Even amid yearly fluctuations in crime rates, the intersection between gun violence and systemic disinvestment is clear and persistent. So to so, too, is the status quo governmental response of relying on policing to respond to it. As Georgetown University law professor and author Cheryl Cashin aptly put it, government does overinvest in black neighborhoods in one area, punitive practices such as policing, law enforcement, and incarceration. These reactive approaches for policing the symptom of segregation and disinvestment distract from the deeply rooted need to invest in the community infrastructure that keeps neighborhoods safe, such as quality housing, youth workforce development and employment programs, green space, and civic and community-based organizations. Luckily, the influx of federal resources flowing into communities from the American Rescue Plan Act and the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act offers an unprecedented opportunity to properly invest in disinvested communities and advance the community-based safety alternatives proven to promote a more holistic, life-affirming vision of safety. So thank you, Brookings, for that article. Very informative, very, very informative. We need to all we all need to invest in America because our infrastructure is crumbling in all parts of the country. Right. In black neighborhoods, white neighborhoods everywhere. You know, the roads and bridges are really trash. Uh, you know, it's a mess. And uh, we need to make sure that uh, racial segregation in housing and in education ends and also in employment. And most importantly, I think the left you know, uh, should not look at the issue of gun violence as just investing, investing and throwing money in the neighborhood. But the left needs to finally take up this mantle of saying enough is enough with the guns. Get rid of the guns. Too many people on the left are scared of those NRA nuts. Stop it. I'm sick of it. So abolish the Second Amendment, period. Prove me wrong. Once again, thanks to everybody watching my videos. Leave a comment, share, like this video and peace.